Laser Scope Insanity. Hi everybody, this is Adam here with a, another laser video. Uh, this right here is what's called a Laser Scope KTP. I just recently got this thing running, uh, bought it uh, uh, on the used market. Um, it uh, used to be a medical laser and uh, at one point in its life it was converted uh, for uh, laser show use. Unfortunately the uh, operation of converting it uh, was a little crude so uh, I'm now uh, uh, aligning it and uh, taking the time to rewire the whole thing so right now it's an absolute mess. Um, as you can see here the scanning components that were added to it uh, this is all going to be redone because I don't like the way it's wired. Um, but uh, I'd love to show you this thing working, uh, but the first thing we're going to do in this video is describe uh, exactly what the anatomy of a laser scope is and all its, its components. Um, first we'll start off with the head of the unit. As you can see right here, here's the top of the head or the business end of the laser. Uh, this right here is the YAG laser module. It basically has a uh, very high power lamp inside of it, kind of like a street light. Uh, it's an arc lamp, which means it continuously arcs, unlike a flash lamp, and uh, produces, I think, about four or 5,000 watts of light inside of this box. And in here is a mirrored cavity, uh, which basically... Uh, uh, takes the light and uh, sends it to the YAG rod, which is located inside of the head. Um, from there, um, we can see the rest of the components right here. This is called a Z-fold cavity. As you can see, it has this kind of like Z-shape to the optical train for the frequency doubling portion of the laser. Because the uh, YAG rod basically creates uh, 10, uh, 1064 nanometers of infrared light and from there the uh, uh, the infrared laser beam is frequency doubled using the KTP crystal which is located in this housing right here along with the KTP heater that would be that guy right there and uh, essentially what it does is it uh, cuts the frequency of the light in half, uh, turning it into 532 nanometers uh, of, uh, of light, which is uh, uh, green in color. So that's basically the top portion of the laser. Oh, and this right here is the Q-switch, uh, quality switch. What this uh, basically does is uh, I found the best uh, way to explain that to uh, people that don't understand lasers is it's like a turbocharger for a laser. Uh, it basically uh, chops the uh, the oscillation of the uh, of the uh, or the resonance of the cavity up into smaller portions. In doing so, it allows the uh, basically the YAG rod in here to energize and uh, create what's called population inversion uh, to a peak output and then basically then fires that oscillation with this it's actually like a high speed chopper is what it is and uh, it creates uh, very powerful pulses and spikes of, uh, of uh, energy which is in the form of uh, laser light to then uh, basically amplify the amount of power that's being fed to the KTP and so anyway, uh, back over here again, we got the scan block, the uh, uh, Galvo drivers, and power supply. All this needs to go somewhere else. Uh, down here, we have, uh, you can kind of see this box over here. That right there is the KTP heater uh, controller. That basically uh, is an oven controller for the KTP crystal for frequency doubling. And then over here we have the Q-switch driver. It's basically just like an RF uh, supply for supplying uh, RF frequency to the crystal to modulate it. Uh, that's just a low frequency power supply, 5 volts, 24 volts, just like you'd find in a computer power supply. Uh, over here, this 
big gold box right here. This right here is the uh, basically the lamp uh, supply for the YAG rod. And this is what powers the lamp that uh, that's uh, in the head. And uh, uh, it makes uh, quite a bit of current. And the idea is that it runs the lamp at a nice stable current uh, so it doesn't... Uh, uh, it doesn't overheat and explode. This right here is a controller I just slapped together for running the ale supply. That's what they call them. Um, but uh, that's not uh, permanent. That's just temporary. So if we walk around here, you can see parts of the cooling system. Uh, it's got a DI filter, regular water filter. This tank right here is actually kind of like an intercooler. Um, basically, it has tap water that is in a, its own separate loop that uh, is in a coil inside that tank. And then the closed loop section of the laser is uh, DI water because the uh, lamp that's in here, the electrodes are actually submerged in the water itself, so it has to be high purity water which is of course an insulator and uh, that's basically it it's a very 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 simple laser design um, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this video off let this sucker warm up and when we come back uh, I'll show you it making some photons Okay, now we have the uh, laser warmed up. Basically, uh, waited for the uh, KTP oven to get to temperature. You can uh, see that by that indicated flashing light. That's the uh, basically the uh, the uh, temperature modulating on the crystal itself. Uh, a slow blink indicates that it's still warming up. Fast fast blink means that it's uh, right about the temperature and it's stable where it's at. So now we got that going. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on some water here. This right here will keep the open loop with the side uh, cool. And uh, one thing I like about this laser versus the ion lasers I'm used to working with is it actually uh, throttles the water because uh, uh, you actually want to keep the uh, closed loop operating uh, of the uh, of the coolant uh, a little bit on the warm side for stability so uh, it actually starts off at a nice slow trickle and then uh, starts going faster as the laser starts creating enormous amounts of heat um, so anyway uh, we'll go ahead and fire the lamp uh, go down here flip this switch okay the lamps now on and uh, the lamp's getting uh, 12 amps of current. Obviously, no lasing yet because uh, the lamp's just basically uh, simmering. So uh, from here, we'll go ahead and crank the current up, and then we'll start to see uh, it it uh, it lays. So uh, let's see here. There we go. 21 amps. It's lasing. And we'll go ahead and crank this sucker up to about. 33 amps and as you can see we got a nice very bright spectacular beam but uh, what's even more spectacular is when you go ahead and fire the Q switch this switch right here is just rigged to turn it on right now this again isn't permanent but uh, that's the switch that will do it so I'll go ahead and flip that switch and boom and now it's real bright Here's a uh, interesting trick. If you listen real closely, you can hear the uh, Q switch basically zapping this cigarette to light it. So uh, here's another cigarette lighting demonstration uh, with this laser. As you can see, very, 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 very bright. And uh, notably, 
very, very, very dangerous. Wear your safety goggles, kids. No kidding. So uh, that's basically the uh, demonstration of the uh, laser scope KTP. Just turn the key switch off. Go ahead and turn the current down now. Anyway, thanks for watching. Enjoy.